I really enjoy that song. It's uh, kind of like a prayer, almost, singing a prayer to the Lord. And uh, we're going to very quickly come to a point to where we can realize part of the answer to that prayer, more purpose in prayer. Our prayers tonight, we're going to begin with the request that God would raise up teachers that will properly expound the flesh. Romans 8, verses 8 and 9. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Unfortunately, uh, this, this is hidden to a great many people, which um, adds to the jeopardy of being confused about a great many things whenever it comes to the scripture. Anytime we don't understand something, and this is a very important thing to understand, uh, this is an area where we're like weak in our defenses against false doctrine, against uh, false teachers, against we, we, don't, we don't know what it is that, that we need to do. Uh, we take to ourselves guilt that doesn't rightfully belong to us. We, we take credit for things that God said he separated us from. Uh, there's just a lot of bad things that happen from ignorance. And ignorance is never, as far as the scriptures are concerned, ignorance is never uh, something that, that we should be found in because it's always a jeopardy to us. Now, our prayer is that God would raise up teachers that will properly expound the flesh. We don't need more people just talking. Are people that confuse the issue because they're speaking about things they don't know what they're talking about. Anytime you don't know what you're talking about, it's best to be quiet. Amen. It's, it's best to uh, apply yourself uh, aforehand and search things out with prayer and with study and relying on the Lord. And if he gives you understanding, well, then you give what God has given you, and it'll be profitable. If not, then you sit down and let somebody else talk about it, somebody that, that understands it, because we're responsible for the effect that we have on brethren. Now, this to properly expound the flesh, we, this is something that we are no longer. Uh, Paul, in, in this very chapter, is expounding the flesh. Whenever he says, ye are not in the flesh, we have to know what that means. We can't look down at these bodies and say, well, yes, we are. We're tabernacling in these bodies, but we are not in the flesh. It's like being in the world, but not of the world type of a thing, where, where our identity is not of the flesh. Amen. The ruling part of us is not Amen. the flesh. Amen. What the, uh, we are we are in a position of subduing and subordinating the flesh. Amen. Now, we don't doubt that we have it to deal with, but whenever somebody says, who are you, your mind should automatically go, I'm a child of God, born of the Spirit, Amen. not, well, I'm just of the flesh. That would be a confession like, I'm just of the earth, earthy. No, we're not. No, we're not. But we need for the brethren worldwide to, to have this in their arsenal of understanding so that they can do valiant battle, so that they can overcome when they're tempted, so that God can be glorified in their speech and in their conduct. This, this is important. God gave it to us to know, and we would that brethren would know this. Think of how we've been helped whenever... God opened up our understanding concerning this, how it changed things for us, mm -hmm. how it helped us in our fight of faith, mm -hmm. how it strengthened us in, the, in the, the race that we're running. And so we would desire that all our brethren everywhere. And then if there's more to learn, that God would continue to instruct our understanding and cause us to receive the fullness of this teaching also. Mm -hmm. So who'll lead us in that request? Brother Jeremy. 
Brother Tony. All right. Our next request is found in 1 Peter, being the third chapter in verses, uh, or verse 12, not verses. It's written here, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Our prayer is that God would raise up teachers who will declare the necessity of righteousness. If teachers are not declaring the necessity of righteousness, then they don't know the God that they say they're serving. God is righteous. He's not going to allow unrighteousness to be associated with him ever. Yes. Ever. Uh -huh. One time, one time, God was associated with unrighteousness, and that was in the Son when he bore our sins in his body. Never again. Jesus will never be associated with sin again. The Father, the sin has been put away from the face of God. So sin has no part or parcel in, in the Godhead at all. Period. Now, if people want to claim to be part of God's children, part of the body of Christ, don't think for a moment that unrighteousness is going to have any part in it. And if what you are is unrighteous, then what you are is a foreigner and a stranger. Righteousness is, is an, uh, a, an essential qualification because what Jesus has done and is doing is bringing us to God. He's going to present us faultless. The church is without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Every representation of the work of Christ and his people is righteousness and holiness, Amen. cleanness before the Lord. But we live in a time when it, this, is a, this is a very necessary prayer, that God would raise up teachers who can expound this with power and anchor it in the thinking of those that would be saved about being righteous and holy and that not leaving any question and not leaving any leeway for the flesh to, um, to express itself or to have dominance in any part of their life. But for, see, this will go hand in hand with this, this matter of uh, understanding the flesh. Righteousness, if you don't understand righteousness and you don't understand about the flesh, you're going to be a very confused runner. So it's um, very debilitating at, at the least and uh, has, has the capacity of overthrowing your faith in, in the worst. So who will lead us in that request? God would raise up teachers who will declare the necessity of righteousness. Sister Nikki. Sister Ada and Brother Robert. All right. And then finally, brethren, uh, Galatians 5, verses 16 and, verses, and verse 25. I said 16, did I? Galatians 5. All right looking at the wrong one this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit and we're asking that all believers would discern what it means to walk in the spirit now this is this is another one of those um, those topics where it's associated with a great many other things it isn't so simple as to take a little word study on walking and another little word story, uh, study on the spirit and then put them together and get this real simple formula for walking in the spirit. Okay, now we know all about walking in the spirit because we all know about walking and we know who the spirit is so we can walk in the spirit. No, no. Walking in the spirit has a great many uh, entailments. You've got to, it, it has to do with walking in the light as he is in the light. It has to do with walking by faith and denying the flesh. And it, it, like 
this could be another one of Brother Given's series. It really has everything to do with faith and knowing how to bring it together so that you have a right understanding of God. This is about knowing the Lord, walking in the Spirit, having fellowship with God, being able to do the work and will of the Father, uh, participating, if you will, in the purpose of God as it concerns you and as it's been revealed in the Scripture, having your understanding be fruitful, there are a great many things that walking in the Spirit has to do with. So we see that in the life of Christ. He had the Spirit without measure. His life exemplified walking in the Spirit. So we are praying that believers would discern this, that they wouldn't be simple in their approach to this, but they would seek to have a, a full and a deep understanding of what this means, because it's life. We're talking about life when we're talking about the things of the Spirit. He that hath not the Spirit of God is none of his. And if, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're not going to walk in the Spirit. So um, that the people of God in this day, whenever there's a great falling away, when there's a great deal of delusion and deception and falsehood that is being served up from the pulpit in, in many places, when there's uh, the, the, the love of many waxing cold because of iniquity abounding, these really are very jeopardous times. Yeah. This is a time to awake and to ask the Lord for the discernment so that that we're not caught up in these things. And don't think for a moment that any of us are, are just so superior or so strong. I don't think any of the brethren here do that. But we've got to always be on our guard. And this discernment will make us fit for uh, the, the Lord's purposes and for fellowship with God and uh, keep our hope strong as we believe in Christ. So who'll lead us in that request? Brother Aaron. All right. Thank you very much, Brother. Brother Gene has our message tonight, and Sister Annie will come and, and read the sermon text for him. And um, Brother Ricky, would you remember Brother Gene before he comes up to preach with me? Thank you. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, 